Have you guys had enough launches for one month? No? Well, I, I have. Still though, we soldier on with what is thankfully the last major launch of July 2019. This is the RTX 2080 Super from NVIDIA. Specifically, this right here is the Zotac AMP model. Considering that the 2060 and 2070 Super variants gave us a significant boost over their predecessors, hopefully we'll see the same thing this time around. So if you're not yet familiar with NVIDIA's Super lineup, here is a quick refresher. The original RTX 2060, 2070, and 2080 have been supplanted by essentially supercharged versions of themselves. In the case of the 2080, the Super version sees a bump in CUDA cores, base clock, boost clock, memory bandwidth, and unfortunately, power consumption. When it came to the 2060 Super and the 2070 Super, these bumps resulted in noticeable and worthwhile performance increases. And this of course wasn't without good cause, as AMD was about to launch their own competing products, the RX 5700 and the 5700 XT. Without getting into the back and forth between the two companies, it's safe to say that had Nvidia not made this move, AMD's new products would have swamped them, both in price and performance. Now, the playing field is a lot more level, as while the Super cards edge ahead in performance, the Navi GPUs have a slight advantage in price. Seems like a pretty fair playing field. But the RTX 2080 still doesn't have any real competition. Radeon 7 was supposed to be that card, but it had a number of its own issues and is now discontinued. So is NVIDIA really incentivized to push this tier of GPU forward as much as it was with their lower end offerings? After all, the 2080 Ti already exists and it's a monster both in price and horsepower. Maybe that's why the 2080 Super only gets an additional 4.3% increase in CUDA cores, while the 2060 gets 13.3% and the 2070 11.1%. Regardless, there's no price increase here, so it's almost like getting more for free, always a worthwhile option if available. We also see the Founders Edition cards drop down in price to the normal MSRP of $699, kind of normalizing the baseline price across the board. Zotac's AMP version still uses a dual fan cooler design, but it's overall larger than the FE model and uses two 8-pin power connectors instead of an 8 plus 6. I do like that it still retains the two-slot form factor, something that's becoming increasingly rare for this generation. The shroud is attractive and color neutral, and the backplate keeps the same aesthetic. For testing and comparison, I decided to run all benchmarks in 4K for the same reason that we run our CPU tests in 1080p, to make sure that the proper component is being loaded and not being held back in any way. Granted, you'll see that 4K maybe isn't the ideal resolution for actually gaming with this card as we don't break 60 FPS except in one test, but the scaling between GPUs should remain relatively consistent across resolutions. The test bench remains the same as it has for the past few months, 9900K at 5 gigahertz in a Z390 RS Master. I ran comparisons against the RTX 2070 Super, RTX 2080, the 2080 Ti, and the RX 5700 XT. I also decided to throw in some overclocking results, so you'll see those in the charts as well. Before we get into the results, here are some important observations about the card during the testing. Power draw was almost exactly what Nvidia claimed at stock settings, but bumped up to 278 watts after an overclock was applied. Noise also increased as the fans ramped up, and in fact they were running at about 80% to keep the card cool after overclocking, resulting in a fairly noisy situation. As a result, temps remained just about the same. Here are the stock and overclocked frequency numbers after a 30 minute soak. This was only a 100 megahertz core offset, and although we could get the memory to plus 1050, going any higher on the core resulted in heavy artifacting and or crashes. Here are your gaming results.
After everything is tallied up, here is the performance comparison chart. The 2080 Super gives us what initially I thought was a disappointing result. After all, the stock settings only bumped us up 5.3% over the original RTX 2080. This doesn't get us anywhere near the 2080 Ti even after overclocking. But then I remembered that this doesn't come with a price premium and that made the situation a whole lot more palatable. I think the people who will be most disappointed by the 2080 Super won't be the people who buy one, but those that recently purchased a regular RTX 2080 and now see a similar product at the same price with slightly more performance. Maybe this is what the RTX 2080 should have been from the get-go, as although 5% might not seem like a lot, it's now firmly in front of the previous generation GTX 1080 Ti, something that couldn't be said at launch. So have you recently bought a 2080, and are you maybe a little salty about it? I don't blame you, but let me know down below in the comments if this very mild performance increase upsets you. Also, don't forget to get subscribed to the channel if you are not already and check out the merch store linked down below to help support the channel directly. As always guys, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.